Hello and welcome to our video on customizing the grid views in TrackIt. Today we're going to look at the help desk grid views specifically, but these customization options will work in any of the grids and any of the modules in TrackIt. As you can see here, I'm already logged into the system and I'm already in the help desk. If you're not sure how to find the help desk, it's really pretty simple. You click the menu on the left side of TrackIt and it will be listed under modules. So let's get started. To begin with, TrackIt ships with several canned views here. You'll see all assignments, all tickets, all work orders, etc. These can views cannot be modified. However, you can copy them and customize them and make as many custom views as you want. In addition, you can make those views public for all your technicians to use or private so that only you see them. So to start out, let's just take a look at the grid view itself. We have columns across the top and then the rows of help desk tickets underneath. As you highlight over each of the columns, you'll notice a drop-down arrow. If you click on one of those drop-down arrows, you will see that you have the option to sort, ascending or descending, or group the data by that field, or you also have the option to turn off the grouping. You'll notice that any drop-down you click on for any field has this show in groups option, which can be turned off at any time. You can also change the grouping just by selecting group by this field. So for example, right now, we are grouped by the assigned to full name. So let's say we want to group by priority. I can click the drop down arrow on the priority field here and click on group by this field. You'll notice that changes the grouping and now all of my tickets are grouped by the priority. If I want to group by status, same deal. I can click the drop down, click group by this field. Now all of my tickets are grouped by status. The sorting that we talked about a moment ago you don't have to click this drop down and pick sort ascending or descending. You can just click on the header itself and sort ascending or descending. There will be an arrow here indicating the sort order, whether it's ascending or descending, right in the column header as you click on it. Notice if I click over here on ticket summary, the arrow moves over here. We also do support multi-column sorting. So let's say, for example, we want to sort by requester. So we'll sort by that. And then within each requester, we want to sort by priority. So I press my control key on my keyboard, I click on priority, and now you'll notice there's an arrow on requester and there's an arrow on priority. And you'll also notice here that under all these ones assigned to David, they are sorted in order. Next thing we'll take a look at is how do you customize which columns you see on this screen because that is also an option. You will see that up here next to the views menu. There's an icon here, manage columns. If we click on that, you'll be presented with a list of all the columns in the particular module you're in. So in this case, the help desk module. You'll notice there are check marks next to the columns that are displayed. So let's scroll down here and let's say we want to display the category full path. So we will check that box, click OK. And then if we scroll over to the right, we should notice that that field is now added here. I can then click on the field and drag it anywhere I would like in this view. You'll notice the little green indicator arrows showing the position of where it's going to be displayed once I let go. So now I'm gonna drop it. And notice that I can't see the entire field. So just like most applications that have column headers like this, you can click the edge of the column header and drag it out to expand it. The next thing we'll take a look at here is the filter. You can access that by clicking the filter button here next to the view menu. In this all tickets view that I'm in now, there is only one active filter and that is set to inactive equals false. So that means we are only looking at all the active tickets in the system. If I want to add additional filter criteria here, all I have to do is click the plus button, select my field, select my condition, and select my value. If I apply this now, I will only see tickets that are assigned to the help desk group. So going back to my value here that I selected for my filter, I'm gonna open that back up. Notice there's some options in curly braces. The system will provide you with variables based on the field you select to try to make this more of a dynamic filter that can be used in certain situations. So for example, I may wanna see current group only. What this does is it figures out the current group of the currently logged in technician and then modifies that filter on the fly to only show those records. So I logged in as an administrator in the administrator group. 
So if I set up a filter like this, I will only see tickets that are assigned to the administrator group. So once I have all my filter criteria in here, I can just click apply. And notice under the assigned to group, I only see system administration now because that's the group that I belong to. The next thing we're going to check out here is the formatting for the rows. This can come in pretty handy because you can use some visual indicators to help you quickly assess the situation for certain views. So let me show you an example. It's easier to understand when you see what I mean here. So I can come in here and I can select a field. A very common one here that people do this with is priority. So I'm going to say when my priority equals critical, I want to change the background color of my row to red. I want to change the text color of my row to white. I would like to change the text style to bold because I really want to see that. And then I'm going to leave this check to apply to the whole row. And so now you see a preview of what the record is going to look like when this is applied. So I'm going to go ahead and apply it. And notice now all the tickets with a critical priority show up in red. Now I can also go back here, click add to add another condition, and say that I would like anything with a priority that equals high to be yellow. And I'm going to make this one bold as well. And I'm going to apply that. So now notice I have criticals in red and highs in yellow. Okay, now let's say I want to add another condition. And this time I'm going to base it off the category because I'm really concerned about if I ever have network issues. So I'm going to select category equals network. And for this one, I'm going to say the background color needs to be blue. And apply. And here we go. Notice that the network one is now blue. Another interesting thing you're going to notice here is I have a network issue up here at the top, which shows up red. So why is that happening? So that's happening because of the order of operations of the rules that I've configured. Now, if network issues are more important than my priorities, which it depends on the situation, let's just say in this particular case, network issues are more important than whatever the priority is. I'm going to go in here. Notice there's some arrows here on the right. I could click on the up arrow for this blue one. Notice it moves to the second slot. And then I can click on it again and move it to the top slot. And so now, when I click on Apply, you will notice that all my network ones are marked blue, and then the other critical ones are marked red. So that's a powerful change over the last version of Trackit that was out, is now you can just simply move these rules up and down until you get them in the order that you need so that you can get the color formatting that you want to see. So I'm going to close out of this, and now let's say I want to sort by ticket ID, and I'm going to sort that descending because I like to see all my newest tickets at the top. And then I'm also going to remove this grouping because now I can see all of my tickets in my view sorted by the ticket ID descending. One last thing I want to do here, I'm going to go ahead and click here on this refresh option. And I'm going to say I want this to refresh every five minutes. So now I've set up my grid formatting. So the last thing I want to do now is I want to save this view so that I can use it again. So I click on the view menu. And notice there's an option that says save current view as. There's no save current view because I can't save the system view because I've modified it. So I'm going to click on save current view as. Now if I wanted to just discard those changes, I could. I could click abandon changes to current view. But I'm going to go ahead and say save current view as because I want to save it. Now I have to give it a view name. And I'm going to leave it as private right now. But notice the options here. Private's available only to me. Public is available to all technicians. So I'm going to go ahead and save it. Now I'm not sure if you noticed, but you see this little eye here that indicates the view menu? This little eye changes to a light track it blue color when I've modified it. I'll show you here. I'm going to make a change here to change the width of that column. Notice that that's now changed. Now let's say I'm going to change to a different view here. The system's going to warn me that I've made changes to my view and I haven't saved them. So if you've worked on a view and really customized it, the system's going to watch out for you and make sure you don't just throw it away.
I'm going to click cancel here. I like my view, so I'm going to go back here and say abandon changes to current view. And now it goes back to my custom view with the black icon. If I click this drop down menu again, notice the separator here. And now I see all the views that I create just above that separator. So the views that I've created will be at the top, the system ones will be underneath. Okay, so now let's say I want to change my view and I want to show only tickets that are open because notice I've got a closed one in here. So I'm going to go back to filter and I'm going to add a condition and say status type and check. I only see an O and a C, which stands for open and closed. The reason behind this is you could have multiple statuses that are still used on open tickets, and you could have multiple statuses that represent closed tickets. So in some instances, you may want your grid view to show you every open ticket regardless of the status. In some cases, you may want to see only tickets that are in the exact status of open. For closed tickets, same thing. You may want to see every single ticket that is closed. Or in some cases, you may only want to see certain tickets that are in a specific closed status. So let's give an example of this using open. I may have open as a status. I may have on hold as a status. I may have pending response from user as a status. And I may have waiting on a vendor. So all of those statuses are open statuses in my system. They're not closing the ticket by using them, but they have different values because I'm tracking my ticket through the workflow process. So in that case, if I want to see all of those types of tickets in my view, I would do status type equals O for open, and now I would see all of those types of tickets in my view. So I'm going to click apply here, and you'll notice that the closed ticket that was down here at the bottom is now going to be gone. And so now I want to save this view. So I'm going to click my drop down and I'm going to say save current view as save. Now you'll notice when I click on this drop down, the my open tickets view appears here. Now if I change something in this view and then I want to save the view without creating a new one, I can just click and say save current view. The system will ask me again to confirm the name and whether I want to keep it private or not, and then I hit save. If I want to change it to public, I would just do click the drop down, save current view, change this to public, save it, and now it's a public view that everybody can access. Lastly, we'll take a look at manage views. Say you've created some views that you want to get rid of now. You can go to manage views. That will bring up a list of the views in your system and you can just click on the X to delete the ones you don't want. Of course, there's a confirmation. If you click OK, the view is deleted. And now I close my Manage Views window. Now I'm back to the default My Open Tickets view because I deleted the view that I was actually on. So it has to go to something. So it goes to the default My Open Tickets view. And now I can go back to My Custom View. So the last thing I'll mention about views here is once you have this all set up the way you like it and you have the view that you like, you have the option to actually export this view to Excel or to HTML. So some of our users use this as kind of a quick and dirty report. So you can change the columns, change the sort, change the grouping, set it all up the way you want, and then come over here to this little ellipsis, select export, and then select CSV or HTML. You can then take that exported file and open it up in Excel and do pivot charts or graphs or any other kind of manipulation that you want with that data. So I think that about covers all of the information on customizing the grid view. For more videos in this training series, you can visit our documentation site at docs.bmc.com. If you forget where the documentation is, you can always click the help link in the upper right hand corner and sidetrack it. Some other useful resources are the Trackit community where you can talk with other Trackit users and support representatives about how to get the most out of your product. You can reach that site at community.trackit.com. You can also reach our technical support directly by visiting support.trackit.com. And for general product information, you can always visit trackit.com. Thank you for watching, and I hope this video has been helpful to you.